What's that, Wilson? I guess, I guess we could do that. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, we could graph a sine wave, but he's got to start it. Definitely, he has to start. Hey, nice start, Wilson. Zero, zero. Is that right? Yeah, sine of zero is zero. Okay, Wilson, slow down a bit. We need to make sure everybody understands the horizontal axis is now theta axis, and the vertical is y. y equals sine theta. Okay, I think we're gonna need some of your friends. All right, jeez. Remember to stay, pi halves away. sine of theta. Well, sine of zero is zero. So then sine of pi over four, mm, I wish I had something for my pi over fours. Oh, that works. Okay, so sine of pi over four is root two over two, which is about 0 0.707. So we could put that right about there. Okay, and then sine of pi over two is one. Sine of three pi over four okay, is 0.7 sine of pi is zero. Sine of five pi over four is negative root two over two, which is about negative 0.7. Okay, sine of three pi over two is negative one. Sine of, oh no. Sine of seven pi over four is negative root two over two. And then two pi, zero. All right, so we have this nice pretty sine wave. And we have these five pattern, like really prominent pattern points. We start at zero, then we go high, back to zero, then we go low, back to zero. Always go high before we go low. So we have one cycle of y equals sine theta. And the amplitude is one, which is half of the height. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to make sure everybody understands this is a continuous graph. So. We would go from that zero, of course, pi thirds is about 0.5, pi four is 0 0.7, get up here to one. So you have to really visualize this coming along. I'm gonna pause here because I wanna talk about and remind you that from zero to two pi, we have one cycle of the sine wave. And what's our amplitude? Well, we go from negative one to one, half the height, we have an amplitude of one. So the parent function, remember, zero high, zero low, zero, amplitude of one, and period is two pi. Now this continues to go. So remember, this never stops, but of course we're gonna have to stop. Sine of three? Hmm, well, so sine of three. Okay, well, if this is pi, which is about 3.14, then three would be just before. So this is like pi radiuses, so three radiuses would be right about here-ish. So we wanna see where that lines up to the y-axis. So let's try to line these little guys up. Just barely above zero. So out of my choices, it seems like 0.1 would make the most sense for sine of three, which is three radiuses. Oh, are you trying to challenge me, Wilson? Two cycles between zero and two pi. Let's see what would happen. We'd still have our pattern point, so I'd start at zero, but then I have to scoosh in a little bit. I'd go high, then I would go back to zero, then I'd go low, then I'd go back to, oh, nice. Zero. Okay, I think I'm doing good. Zero, go high. Zero, wow, these are just placed perfectly. And then go low. Let's see if we did that now. Two cycles, this is my two pi, between zero and two pi. High, low, one cycle. High, low, two cycles. So, 
2 pi divided by 2, the period is pi. Perfect. What's that? You want to do 6 pi as one period? I'm not sure we have enough room for that. You might have to go to period. Okay, so period of 6 pi, Wilson. Got it. So when we're trying to change the period like this, it makes sense to kind of have some steps that we could always follow to graph sine functions. So the first step to graphing when you know your period is to go ahead and plot your period on your theta axis. So plot period, and we're gonna put the period at the end of the theta axis, or you could leave some room so that you can draw more cycles if you want. Now the second step is to make sure that you have spaces for your pattern points from zero to your period, or again, we could be anywhere on this graph drawing our pattern point. So then we want to divide our period into four parts. So half of my period would be in the middle and then half of my halves would give me four parts. So half of six pi is three pi, half of three pi is 1.5 pi, or we could say three pi over two. And then I wanna know what this tick would be. Well, since I know that this is three pi over two, I could count up by three pi over two, or I mean, I know that this is four and a half, I could do it that way as well. But like three pi over two, so three pi over two plus three pi over two would be six pi over two, which is three pi, plus three pi over two again would be nine pi over two, or like I said, 4.5 pi, and then nine pi over two plus three pi over two again would be 12 pi over two, which is six pi. The key here is that we've labeled these. That's a crucial step to graphing is figuring out your labels on your graph. Then we would want to label our amplitude on our graph. Our amplitude here, since we're only changing the period, the amplitude would still just be one. So we'll go ahead and label our one and our negative one so that we have space to put our pattern points. Then finally, to finish our graph, we're gonna just plot our pattern points. So we would go, okay, sine starts at zero, then we go high, so up to that one, then we go back to zero, then we go low, then we go back to zero to finish sine. So we went zero high, zero low, zero. Now, of course it keeps going, but we were just trying to show that that period changed to six pi. So then when we draw in sign, we wanna make sure we have a concave down like a frown, concave up like a cup. And then we could show that this keeps going because it does keep going. Sign keeps going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so to review our graphing steps, when we know the period, we plot the period at the end, we divide the period into four parts, then we label those four parts, label our amplitude on the y-axis, and finally plot our sine pattern points, zero high, zero low, zero. And we have one cycle of sine. Okay, and then for number of cycles between zero and two pi, well, we could take our normal period two pi and divide that by our new period six pi and we're gonna get pi's divide out one third so that means between zero and two pi we're only seeing a, a third of a cycle let's see what wilson has for us next all right amplitude two that sounds like a vertical stretch by a factor of two let's do it we start at zero instead of going high one we have to go high two Okay, I'll straighten this out later. I two, but then we still go back to zero because zero times two is zero. And then two times negative one down, negative two, approximately there. All right, and back to zero. So really, an amplitude change is not that hard. Hmm. I think we need to quiz Miss Ryan Wilson. <laughs> All right, so what's the new challenge, Wilson? So you want y equals negative two-thirds sine theta? All right, let's talk about the negative. If I multiply a function by a negative, I am reflecting that function over the horizontal axis, or in this case, the theta axis. Either way. Instead of going zero high, I would go zero low because I'm reflecting. So it's gonna look like that. Still comes back to zero because if I multiply a zero by a negative, it's still zero and then then low would move up to high here and then back down to zero. So it's gonna look like this yellow transformed graph. So now if I have an amplitude of two thirds, 
that would just be a vertical compression by a factor of two thirds. So that's gonna move this low point to negative two thirds, maybe here. And then that will just move this high point to like there.